<laughs> I've got irritable bowel syndrome. I'm not an angry asshole. I just have one. <laughs> now what that means is that most foods make me sick. I have alternating constipation and diarrhea. But half of the time, I don't give a shit. <laughs> so with the chronic pain and crippling depression, I sometimes feel like cutting myself. But instead of cutting myself, just eat a cookie. <laughs> it's supposed to be like self-deprecation, but it's more like self-defecation. <laughs> How many of you go here to Davis? Students, students, yeah, yeah, yeah. First years, anyone, any first years? Okay. My first year at Davis, the first thing I learned was how to do a front flip. You hit the left brake. <laughs> and on bikes, I've run over the same person five times. Or maybe I'm blurry eyed and racist. <laughs> Self-deprecation self is hard for me, it's, it's weird. There's, I'm a resident advisor in the honors dorms here. And on my lounge, the residents have a basket full of like pens, pencils, erasers, things like that. It says, stuff we don't want. Which is the same kind of basket my parents put me in as a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, it's a dumpster. <laughs> I was late earlier, I was supposed to be here 5.30, got here 6. I've been feeling uh, sick all day long, like stomach sick. I think I might have Dia. A really bad case of Dia. <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat out with my mom. The with in that sentence is really important. <laughs> I like to eat out with my mom. <laughs> but my, my girlfriend, she's in a coma. So I guess you could say I eat vegetables. <laughs> See, I have a really healthy diet though, because of my IBS. So I can only eat like, I eat rice, chicken, and carrots almost every day for, for two years now. And with that, I think that if I cut out soda, I'd probably have a six pack because I didn't drink it. <laughs> when I was born though, I had a conjoined twin, female conjoined twin. At first I didn't really like her, but then over time, she began to grow on me. <laughs> you know, I got in touch with my feminine side. <laughs> but middle school, middle school, she got into drugs, became a bad influence. So I had to cut her off. <laughs> you know, my, all, all the jokes about my family are so much better because my family's like five feet away from me. <laughs> this next one. My sister is a cheap asshole. <laughs> and by that, I mean $5 anal. <laughs> Which explains why she has all my allowance money. <laughs> Apparently my dad's too. attempting to have anal sex with a statue. I think I've hit rock bottom. <laughs> I think a lot of people, like, they peak in high school, right? Like pedophiles, they, they like peak in high school. <laughs> and one of my friends back home, he said, Drew, you've gotta get Snapchat. It's basically this app for girls to send you pictures of their tits. So I got it. But I basically just ended up Snapchatting my sister. So I guess my friend was right. <laughs> but I've become like a lot more comfortable talking with my mom. Like at this point now, I can even talk to her like about my sex life, now that she's a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I know. It's 
to your Sunday premiere at Game of Thrones right here. <laughs> but, uh, one, one, I've got a bunch of people here. So my friend Jai, he's back there at the back. Raise your hand, Jai. When I met Jai, it was weird. I met him here at the dining common. So I was away from home. And the first thing he says, the first thing I ever hear this guy say is, I know your mom. <laughs> now, I've played Xbox Live. I've heard it a million times. I fucked your mom. So I'm thinking he's just terrible at insulting me. Like when he was raised, he was taught, when a mom and dad want to have a baby, they know each other. <laughs> like, like in the same kind of way that like a, a girl with dark black makeup knows her uncle. <laughs> <laughs> So, but, but Jai and I hang out uh, quite often, and about a week ago, uh, we were playing board games, he goes home like two in the morning, and he texts me and said, Drew, while I was going home, I passed out in the car and woke up three lanes over right before I hit the aisle. This is a true story. And, and it really shocked me, just the fact that like one of my friends could die just because we'd stayed up late playing board games. So I imagined having, you know, to go out there and identify the body, like, so, uh, do you know this man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know his mother. <laughs> One of my friends works at a zoo, but he gets in trouble all the time because of his accent. He says, you wanna see monkey? You wanna see baboon? You wanna see my cock? <laughs> That same friend had ear sex with a person who had HIV. I know, it's weird, right? Ear sex for starts and then with someone who has HIV? Now that friend has hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I wanted to put my hair like in a man bun. My friend was like, dude, that's gay. But I thought it would have been a lot more gay to have wanted man buns. <laughs> Does anyone hear of that computer virus that plays adolescent German dungeon porn? I mean, it just plays them. You gotta have the videos. <laughs> now, porn, porn's weird, though. Like, I don't know how many of you know this, but in Japan, a lot of the porn is animated, which is really strange. And I was thinking about that. Why is Japanese porn animated? And I think the reason why is because it's the only way they could portray a Japanese man with a big penis. <laughs> and then Native American porn. I've never found any Native American porn, except for necrophiliacs. <laughs> but on the topic of porn fetishes and other weird shit, my girlfriend told me she had a scat fetish. For those of you that don't know what that is, that's where you get off by eating feces, a scat fetish. She says, Drew, I just wanted to be straight up with you. I have a scat fetish. And I was shocked. You're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I was fingering my girlfriend. It's a great way to start a joke. Fingering my girlfriend. A bunch of sparkly dust comes out. <laughs> I think I finally found the glitterous. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to play piano. <laughs> I just brought it because it, it just looked kind of fun. <laughs> and it makes good noises for when the dokes, jokes are dark or racist. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend was complaining to me, though. Right, anyone have a girlfriend here that complains? Complaining girlfriends, I can't be the only one, right? She's complaining to me that my penis was too big. Yeah, you're surprised, like a white guy, right? I was just as surprised that a one-year-old could talk. <laughs> anyone here, have you ever laughed so hard the stuff comes out of your nose? I can't be the only one that's happened to you, right? At least a couple people, right? You laugh so hard stuff comes out of your nose. I tell hilarious jokes when my girlfriend doesn't swallow. <laughs> Stuff coming out of your nose. Last weekend, I had to update my penis. Yeah, better performance. 
and bug fixes. <laughs> Back in high school, this girl said, I, I overheard this conversation. She was like, I think Drew's gay because he's never had a girlfriend before back in high school. And so I go up to her. So that's, that's kind of a rude thing to say about anyone, right? I go up to her and say, no, you're just too fucking fat and ugly. So I chose to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> now one of my friends used to be a guy, but then became a girl. And on top of that, she's really skinny, no trans fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anal bleach. As if there weren't enough white assholes. <laughs> One of the longest jokes. Longest jokes I've ever told. Because most of the stuff I tell is five, ten seconds, maybe fifteen. Like one-liners, two-liners, puns and stuff. But the longest joke I've ever told is about premature ejaculation. And it's about 30 seconds. <laughs> and it's about Ethan. <laughs> Anyone here think that condoms take the fun out of sex? Any, any of the guys here? Yeah, right? But do you really want all that cum in your butt? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'd wear a condom. <laughs> I know my girlfriend though, she and I were gonna go have sex. So we went and got a magnum, you know? In case we had a baby. <laughs> I don't know. One of the, one of the uh, hardest things I ever had to go through was an abortion because it was, I wasn't prepared for it. You know, I, I just couldn't imagine like having to wait for the next one. <laughs> so that one's a true story. <laughs> no, I, I had a baby though. The doctor. Said, Drew, you don't know jack shit about babies. So I'm gonna lay it out for you. Two things. Two things. One, make sure your baby always has food. And two, make sure your baby is always warm. And so I listened to his advice. So I always, and I mean always, make sure that my baby has food when I leave her in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I like how much you like them. I'm like, we have the same <laughs> fucked up sense of humor. We're like, uh, baby murderers over here. <laughs> but I think that, like, babysitting could be smothering if you have a big butt. <laughs> now, anyone watch the news, though? The news has a lot of fucked up stuff, right? Did you ever see anything good on the news? Never. Absolutely never. Watching the story. Police burst into the home of a newlywed couple, opening fire and blowing to pieces the couple's baby. But none of the police got in trouble for it because they wrote the baby off as tireless and resisting a rest. <laughs> and he was black. <laughs> Last weekend, I went to a paper recycling event, but it just turned out to be a bunch of white trash. <laughs> and a summer ago, my dad and I went to Alabama on a road trip. Now everyone was like, dude, don't go there, it sucks. Alabama's terrible. But I gotta say, I respect Alabama. Like, they start decorating for Christmas in April. All these lit up crosses. <laughs> <laughs> and I always knew that Jesus was black. <laughs> but in that same summer, we went boating. And while boating, we got swallowed up by a whale named Luck. But as it turned out, Luck was allergic to us, and his tummy started rumbling. I said, oh God, you've got to be shitting me. <laughs> we were shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> to afford all those trips that summer, I had to do a lot of work. And so, I went to Canada, and I was a bagger at a Safeway in Canada. And the cashier, he hands me a loaf of bread. I'm like, what do I do with this? Bag it. <laughs> but Canada's weird, weird place full of weird people. Like I saw this guy with cylinder legs. So it was, that's not the joke, but that's, that's pretty hilarious. You've probably seen him too, fucking Canadians. So I saw this guy with cylinder legs. So it was no surprise 
that he wore tube socks. <laughs> and he had this little dog, cute little dog, shaped like a box. It was rough around the edges. <laughs> and in Canada, I went to the sword store. Great sword store. It's the greatest sword store on the earth, I tell you. And I go and I say, I want a sword for violating women. And so he brings out this giant broadsword, immense. And I go, no, 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 that's not my style. And then he brings out a long, thin sword. And I go, that's the one. It's a little rapier. <laughs> you have to know what swords are to get that one. <laughs> so similarly with sharp objects, I know this guy that got impaled. But I didn't really care, because he was kind of stuck up. <laughs> and this other guy, he got lobotomized, but he didn't mind. <laughs> you ever have something terrible happen to someone you know, and you don't, you don't know how to feel about it? Like, like they're just like a complete asshole, and so you want to feel bad, but it's hard to, and then they get like colon cancer, and you're like, all of a sudden, they're just an incomplete asshole. <laughs> I went to this magic show with a friend, and all the guys loved the magician, but all the women hated him because he would turn the women into action figures. He totally objectified women. <laughs> <laughs> and that friend started freaking out, and I'm like, dude, you need to chill out. But I didn't say when to stop until it was too late. So like, dude, you need to, to thaw out. <laughs> and he got mad at me, got really mad at me. So Drew, you need to treat others how you wish to be treated. So I punched him in the face, because I'm a masochist. <laughs> in 2016, Japan sends to the US their best and brightest. I know, you guys go to Davis. They send their best and brightest. But in 1944, we sent our best and brightest. <laughs> so some of you may have watched the, uh, the, the news. In Japan, in Japan, over 80% of the people there are opposing nuclear energy. Don't you think they're overreacting? <laughs> I think that cannibals are weird, and I think that selfies are weird. You ever see someone take a picture with their food? Like, people do this all the time. They take pictures of their food. But what would a cannibal do? Just take a picture with a friend? <laughs> but you know, the thing with cannibals, imagine, like, trying to explain our stuff to them. Like, yeah, we've got this term, uh, so, like, if you eat way too much, you have, like, a food baby. Like, oh, we have food babies. <laughs> but cannibals... They don't eat American children, because American children are easily spoiled. <laughs> the police have been hunting a serial killer, and the only way they've been following this guy is by the track of really shitty body spray. They're calling him the axe murderer. <laughs> Anyone see that knight, Sir Loin? He was burned at the stake <laughs> Any history buffs in here? Does anyone like history? Yep. Just like three people? Okay, this one might be for you. In the US, we have AstroTurf, but in Russia, they have CosmoTurf. <laughs> Historians have been researching Jesus, and they recently found out that while he was crucified, he had diarrhea. So on top of being nailed to a big wooden cross, he was shitting himself the whole time. So do you think that qualifies as cross-contamination? <laughs> I like my food plain, <coughs> said the Twin Towers. <laughs> <laughs> or said the ocean to Flight 370, depending on which events you follow. Who here has been to a BYOB party? Anyone? Yeah? Yeah? A few of you at least? What about, how, how many of you are actually 21 though? Any of you? You were actually like like three out of the five? So I went to an underage BYOB party. For pedophiles? Bring your own boy? <laughs> the show only gets darker from here. 
I often I wear like a, like tank tops and like basketball shorts and stuff. And my friend was like, Drew, you dress like a seventh grader. I said, no, I dress like the age I'm trying to attract. <laughs> <laughs> and the age that I got the most dates at. No, zero can't be more than zero. <laughs> I told that joke to my residents and I got in trouble for it. Cause I, you know, I could get away with that stuff last year, attracting seventh graders. <laughs> Anal sex. I think that anal sex is best with like a size 12 on the age chart. <laughs> <laughs> Last week I went to a party. But this party wasn't very fun. It was a party for a three-year-old girl. It was a search party. <laughs> and she was the pinata. <laughs> I know, depending on where you go, there's, was she hanged, beaten with a bat? No, she was filled to death with candy. <laughs> but I got in trouble. You like that one? You're like, you can rape and fuck the kids, but if you fill them with candy, that's the one I like, because candy. As long as I get some of it. But I got in trouble recently. Murder charges. They're trying to put murder charges on me. They say, it's because he's an only child. No. <laughs> <laughs> My black friend likes grape soda. <coughs> Not because it's grape, but because it has rape in it. <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't have black friends. <laughs> Just this one. One of my friends, has a foot fetish. Anyone here ever, ever dealt with someone who has a foot fetish? It's kind of weird, right? He has a foot fetish, but he says he's lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend asked me a question. She said, Drew, when you look at me, can you tell that I'm Mexican? I know, she's laughing at us. Can you tell that I'm Mexican? Well, could I be mistaken for something else? I said, I don't know. like. Legal? <laughs> now, with, with Mexican women, Mexican men, you know, they're all coming here, right? And people say it's a bad thing, but like Mexican women, they come here to make it in America. Like they come to be made in America, and most of them are maids in America. <laughs> the sound of a cash register. Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. The same sound as roll call at Davis. <laughs> cha ching! <laughs> cha ching! <laughs> cha ching! <laughs> I don't know. But this guy must support Trump. <laughs> we'll do more on that later. Who here went to picnic day? Anyone go to the Dachshund Derby? That's my favorite part, I love dogs. So I went to the Dachshund Derby. But most of Davis just sees it as a big buffet. Yeah, Asians and their tiny wieners. <laughs> Up through the 19th century in China, to qualify for service in the royal government, a man had to have all of his genitalia removed. This is true. They had to be rendered a eunuch to be able to serve in the government. But at the same time, they <coughs> never got anything done in that government because none of the men had the balls to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> My grandpa was very racist. And I mean very, very racist. But there was one important lesson that he taught me. He said, Drew, never mix whites with colors when doing the laundry. <laughs> I've been told that I'm good with old people. You know, because I, I spent so much time getting molested by one. <laughs> Do you ever think, is skin tight clothes for the elderly baggy? <laughs> 
Earlier I went into a public urinal to go pee. Go up there. I guess you don't go in the urinal unless you're really small, but <laughs> go, to the public restroom. go up to the public urinal to pee. And as I'm peeing, I see some graffiti. It says, the joke is in your hands. Which is true, because I was holding a Bible. <laughs> I gotta apologize because earlier my car was trying to kill off all the abortionists and Mexicans. I yeah. I shouldn't have put it on Ted Cruz control. <laughs> <laughs> Another news story for you. A man in Alabama was not charged for bestiality after having sex with a horse, but instead got in trouble for rape because the entire time the horse kept saying, Nay! Nay! <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, a Kentucky man didn't get in trouble for bestiality or rape after having sex with a dog because he got consent. The so they asked, they did the interviews, this is all on the news, you, the, the news, you can see this stuff. When asked how he liked it, the dog replied, Rough! <laughs> <laughs> Dumb joke. <laughs> Dogs don't like it rough. I, I would know. <laughs> so I, I've been with my girlfriend for like about 18 months. So since I stopped having sex with her mom. <laughs> so since she was born. <laughs> but I, I worked at a summer camp last summer. And as you can tell, I'm not very good with kids. So, you know, the little kid walks up, hey, what's up? Um, you you want to hear a rape joke? <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. What you did to my sister. <laughs> There's a drink at Starbucks called the Flat White. I think it's weird to name a drink after most of their patrons. <laughs> I was trying to write like a, like a skull fucking joke, but nothing came to mind. <laughs> I know it's been mentioned a few times tonight that in Dave's very politically correct environment, right? Imagine all the great science experiments that couldn't have existed with this kind of environment. Like imagine Pavlov's dog. Triggered, triggered, triggered. <laughs> My dad and I, last summer, one of the most labor-intensive projects I've ever had to do, we had to build a deck. Because not only did it take a lot of money, <coughs> but it took a shit ton of work just to hide a dead relative. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say dead hooker, but then I remembered my cousin. <laughs> just a dead relative. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm employed here at Davis as a resident advisor, as I mentioned. And at Davis, if you're an employee here, in the contract agreement, there's a line that says, anything that you create or invent while working at Davis becomes the property of Davis. Meaning anything I make while I'm an RA will become Davis's property. So with that, I present to you, UC Davis's baby fucking machine. <laughs> <laughs> Katehi approved <laughs> and tested. <laughs> now, for the first time, I had sex with a Republican. Never has it felt so right. <laughs> now, Republicans, they have to brush their teeth twice as often with all the shit coming out of their mouth. <laughs> but at least they can afford the toothbrush. <laughs> Everyone's seen Trump, if you, you know, go on social media, the news, anything. Everyone knows that Trump loves golden things, especially showers. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the big things you hear is that, is that the Democratic Party, they're socialists. They're socialists. And a reason that that scares a lot of the old white Republicans is, is back in the day, in the 40s, the Nazi Party Nazi stands for National Socialist. It's the, the German word for it, National Socialist. So I don't think it's that the Republicans think that the Democrats are going to be Nazis. It's just that if they were, 
the Republicans would have too much competition. It's <laughs> a nice experimental joke right here. Uh, who here knows about evolution, right? A fair amount of you, I hope you believe in it. Because there, there's a big misconception too, is that it just was from monkeys and then all of a sudden humans. Well, that's not true. It was evolution through time of different species into humans. But the common misconception is something like this. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, there's another misconception that it was something like, make America great again. <laughs> now, one of those groups hasn't evolved. If you're the first group, you probably think it's the Trump supporters. And if you're the Trump supporters, you're probably thinking with your monkey brain. <laughs> now build, a, build a banana wall, keep out all those orangutans. <laughs> Do one more joke, one more. My girlfriend asked me, she said, Drew, have you ever eaten cactus? And I said, no, I don't like pricks in my mouth. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, my girlfriend loves cactus. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming tonight.